Now Kenyans have been urged to demonstrate their love to fellow Kenyans by donating their blood this month. The acting director of Kenya National Blood Transfusion Service, Josephine Githaiga, uh, recently noted that there has been an increase in demand for blood due to road accidents. Uh, there's a one-day campaign set for tomorrow uh, on the 14th of February and has been dubbed Show Your Love, Donate Blood. And joining me in studio to talk a bit about this, uh, let me introduce my two guests from the far right, Philip Ogola, founder, a digital humanitarian. He'll tell us a little bit about what he does that organization. And next to him is Dr. Josephine Gidaiga, the acting director, Kenya National Blood Transfusion Services. Thank you so much to both of you for finding time to be here with us. Thank you too. Thank you. Show Your Love campaign. Talk to us about that. Let me start with you, Philip. Uh, tell us a little bit about that campaign and its origins. Um, actually, I was the brains behind the, this campaign. It came, uh, you know, coming from being sick in hospital for, for um, like eight months, then having surgery and everything. I experienced this blood issue. So I sat down with my two friends, Chris Kirua and Dr. Thurani of KMP and Duke. And we said, we have to do something. As Kenyans, you know, as young, we have, we have the energy. And then also as digital humanitarian, we, we receive a lot of blood appeals online. It's quite overwhelming. And, uh, you know, it's, it's tough that when most Kenyans don't even know the role of Kenyan blood transmission service. So we decided to approach the, the, the official government bank, uh, 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 blood bank, and uh, came up with this idea of the show, show Your Love. So Show Your Love is just um, it's a one-day campaign, but it's going to be a series of other campaigns every month. Okay. So we, we just want to have that culture of Kenya to, to, to know that they, they, they have a role to play to actually donate blood. Okay. Yeah. You've actually answered uh, several of my questions yeah. at the same time, but we'll come back to talk about future activities. Uh, Dr. Givaiga, let me come to you at the moment. What, what is Kenya's current blood needs? Uh, just so that Kenyans understand uh, how much is needed, how much do we currently have in, in, in the blood bank. Give us some of those numbers. Um, according to WHO, they say for Kenya to be sufficient with blood, you need 400,000 units of blood per year. That is, if 1% of Kenyans donate once a year, will be sufficient. Mm -hmm. And then what we have right now? Mm. Do we have rough numbers or any statistics? I'll give the statistics for last year, okay. uh, 2017. We collected 149,000 units. My goodness, that's less than half. Yeah. And, 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 and we see some statistics. Every 10 minutes, someone in Kenya needs blood. Are those correct? That's not exaggeration? Um, the thing is, people don't know there is Kenya National Blood Transfusion, which are the Ministry of Health blood banks where blood is stored. So sometimes you find people are appealing for blood, but there is blood in our banks, but they're going to the hospitals instead of coming, or the hospitals coming to us to ask for the blood. Okay, okay, so, and, and that's what happens. Philip, let me come back to you. Let's talk about tomorrow. Um, what sort of setup will we have? Which counties uh, can people go and donate blood? And, and sort of what are you doing to rally people? to come out in, in large numbers? Um, the, the Show Your Love campaign actually held in 20, 21 sites countrywide. 21 sites countrywide? Yeah, the main event is actually going to be at KCC. Okay. Yeah, where we're actually going to start at 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. We, we actually want to rope in guys who want to go to work before they go to work, they're actually passing at KCC uh, or even after work. That's why it's actually closing at 10 p.m. And then uh, in other counties we have Machakos, Garissa, Thika, Embu, Meru, Nyeri, Nakuru, Naivasha, Gerija. So what, 21 counties? 21 I don't want you to have to, have to go yeah. and read all of them. Um, what in terms of requirements, what are you hoping to achieve tomorrow? Do you have a target, and maybe you might also want to come in on this, that you hope that by the end of the 14th of February we'll have collected this amount or this number, this amount of blood? Yeah, we are targeting 10,000 units. And that would require 10,000 people? Or how many yeah, people? it would require yeah. roughly okay. 10,000 people. Okay. Yeah. That helps us to crunch the numbers. Donating blood, a noble cause, but there are those who fear. Uh, kindly help us demystify what are some of the common questions and common fears that Kenyans have when they come to you or even to you Ogola they're like I'll support you but I don't want to donate blood and maybe I can get experiences from, from both of you. Mm, I think uh, one of the fears is the needle. Most of the people have a fear of the needle. They don't want to face it but it's a 15 minutes process. It's a very short process. It's not a painful process. It's a smooth process. Uh, the other thing is some people fear to be tested. They think we test on the grounds and we don't test for any disease on the grounds. When we take the blood to the laboratories and all that, we do testing because we have to make sure we give our patients safe blood. Safe blood into yes. the, you put it in the yes. system. So they fear you might expose them yes. there and then if they have yes. concerned about yeah, 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 something. Yeah. Which is not the case. Okay. Yes. And for you, Philip, you have been online, you've been talking about this. What sort of feedback are you getting from Kenyans and from um, just people online who are following your conversation? Uh, it, it, it's quite sad that people talk about blood only when it, when it, it actually affects them. When it's not somebody, a friend or a family, uh, a family. People think that it's only somebody else who is actually in blood. But it hits you hard when it's actually close at home. And sadly, uh, Wahiga, 
It's only the youth who actually actually donating blood. The elder generation actually are staying away. It's quite sad. Are they telling you why? Do you know why? Um, most of them, they fear. They're like, uh, think, oh, you know, I, I think I'll lose energy or, or, or my, I'll, I'll get a disease. There's that, there's that. I think there's just more fear. And even mis mis misconception, there are these myths that, uh, you know, my, my blood may be contaminated or, or I cannot help someone. Okay. Yeah. I mean, hopefully through shows like this, we can, we can change some of those fears. We had a few graphics. I don't know if we can play them now. Um, uh, okay. Um, so, okay, every 10 minutes, someone in Kenya needs blood. Um, who is eligible to donate blood? People from 16 to 65. Can you talk a bit about that, uh, Dr. Gidega? Yeah, we have an age limit that is 16 to 65. So anyone between that age can donate. We also have weight limits, 55 and above, you can always donate blood. Can we, so if the moment you hit 66, you're 65, knocked out? You ca oh, no, it's I'm not sure like you're that. knocked out, <laughs> but like you know, uh, as you grow older, you, there are so many chronic diseases and all you're exposed to. So we try not, and at the same time you're ailing, so you can't say you're as strong as you are when you're 16. So we are trying to make sure even our donors are safe. Okay. So yeah. if maybe your doctor says you are good to give blood, you will give blood. You can still give blood. Yes. Uh, in terms of how much blood can I donate, these are some of the frequently asked questions. Uh, we are told only one unit of blood will be taken and the average adult has, uh, has about 10 to 12 pints of blood. Just help us uh, understand some of those numbers. Um, so uh, we take only one unit of blood and we take after every three months for men and uh, four months for women. Because at the end of the day, every minute, every day, there are cells which are being made in your body and all that. Mm -hmm. So the blood we take from you is being replaced. Yeah. So we take only one unit when you are left with 10 to 12 units of blood in which your body, which, you is supported. A, which is a lot. How long does it take for the blood that you've lost to be replaced? A day, two days? No, 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 no. That's why we are giving you a span of three months three before months. you come again. But it doesn't take three months. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's just to make sure we are at the safe line. We have to make sure we are safe. But within two months or something, you have your blood replaced. Okay. Yes. And uh, what should I do after donating blood? Uh, some say get some rest, take some refreshments. What's, what's the official uh, statement on that? Yeah, you should take a lot of fluids. That is one of the things because you see fluid have been... Uh, uh, we have gotten fluid out of your body, so you should replace that with more fluid. So you should take m more fluids. You should also not be so vigorous. You should be at least toned down a bit for just a few hours. If you are okay, you can continue with your activity. Okay. Philip, let me come back to you. You say that your experiences um, dealing with the condition that you had to deal with for eight months and that you're still recovering from yeah. has opened your eyes to some of these challenges. I can give you a chance to talk a bit more about that, about those who are in need and how we only pay attention when there's an oppressing need that we don't sort of uh, preempt some of these challenges. I can give yeah. you a chance to share on that. You know, uh, as a country, we, 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 we always have these knee-jerk reactions. Even in terms of uh, we only react when there's uh, someone we seek, but we don't, have, we don't plan ahead. So uh, why we are doing this campaign is actually to, to make Kenyans actually understand that there is need to be actually donating blood. And uh, I'll be very honest with you, people online are quite active, but no one gets offline to actually go and donate. So people are tweeting and yeah, retweeting, tweeting, and tweeting and and <laughs> but no one goes offline. When, when you have an appeal about uh, blood, you rarely get that number. Okay. Country. So it's, it's, it's just a telling Kenya it's time we get offline and discuss matters here. Maybe that should have been your second hashtag. <laughs> after, after the first one, get <laughs> offline and, and go and uh, donate blood as well. Yeah. What happens after 14th? You had alluded to the potential to do other events. It's not the only one. Can you give us um, a few specifics? Okay. After, after today, we're actually looking at uh, doing more of... Because uh, it, it's good we actually have KMPDU on board. We have the doctors union on board. And the doctors are actually willing to be part of a conversation. We're looking to actually host talks. We're going to have hosts, um, as in, you know, going around the county, county by county. We're going to, do, to actually engage youth in actually issue preventive health care. We actually, actually uh, discuss about cancer, about HIV, about even uh, people actually going for health checkups. Like my condition actually was, was about me not going for full checkups. So it's time we discuss our health. So this, this blood drive is just an eye opener of bigger things actually come. Okay. Yeah. Dr. Gidaiga, he said that Kenyans only donate blood when there's an emergency, but the truth of the matter is Kenyans mainly donate blood when it's a friend yeah. or a family member who is yeah, in need. Not even an emergency when it's a friend or, um, or a family yeah, very member. True. How do we change that culture? Uh, it's been built over years. <laughs> yeah, it has been built over years. And uh, let me say, 70% of the blood we get, we get it from schools and what? institutions. Okay. Yes. So the t that 20% is what we get from the adults. Okay. Yes. So uh, 
education is one of the keys and taking a responsibility and looking at donating blood is not just giving your blood you're not giving blood to the ministry of health you're not giving blood to the hospitals you're giving blood by you're saving a life that is the whole mentality we should have yes you okay. give your blood you save a life somewhere else give your blood you save a life uh, uh, philip i can give you just a chance just to give make that appeal get you know tell people get offline you know get online get get off the online platform and, yeah. and, and go and see what you can do just uh, your last thought on that uh, i just tell you guys to actually go to the hashtag show your love and uh, it, just for once give a gift of life Okay. Yes, and so if I'm in if I'm in Nairobi, for those watching, I go to KCC. KCC. And can I go online to find out the other locations yes, yes, in the yes. 21 counties? Just check the hashtag. Uh, show your love. Okay. Or, or, yeah. Is there like a website link or something? Mm -hmm. uh, is it posted on like a website or something? Yes, we have the K KMBTS website. We have also Twitter KMBTS official. Yes. Okay. And we have Facebook also. No more calls indeed. Thank you so much. That's uh, Philip Ogola, founder of the Digital Humanitarian. A lot of uh, online activation there. And Dr. Josephine Kidaiga, acting director, Kenyan National Blood Transfusion Services. Noble cause. They've challenged all.